Good afternoon, Adventuresses. I'm super excited today to uh, share with you an uh, interview that I'm going to have with Colleen Aiken, uh, a fellow Adventuresses. Uh, she's a farrier. She is uh, raises Andalusians from breeding right through till showing. Um, so I can't wait to get started. Um, so welcome, Colleen. Thank you. Um, so how did your journey with horses begin? Um, it started when I was a very young kid. Um, my mom said from when I could walk, I always wanted to ride. So we didn't have horses. So I would go to neighbors and get on their horses and pet them and spend some time with them. So, and I always begged for a pony. Oh, yes, that the little girl that always wants, wants a pony. So from there, now you went over to the neighbors. Did they let you ride or, you know, did they lead you around on the back of the yes, said pony? Yes, and it was actually a big old workhorse. And that was actually our first horse. Oh, so you, when you, they moved you're, away, they gave her to us. Your begging work. Yes, it did. So now did you grow up on a farm? Yes, or I Oh, did. okay. Yeah. So that makes it a little bit easier it to <laughs> to, uh, to get said pony yes. if you have a place to, to keep it. Um, how long did you have that pony for? Um, or, well, I guess it was a horse. <clears throat> she was a horse. Her name is Gypsy. Um, we had her, oh, she probably lived for another six or seven, eight years, maybe, until she was very old when she passed away so so then what did you transition to um, from her? i did get a pony from that my parents bought me and he was a bad little pony <laughs> i think lots of ponies are bad mm -hmm. <laughs> so he would have to be ran behind the truck for the lead rope before oh. you could get on said pony <laughs> because he needed some extra exercise right needed to blow off some yes. of that steam the the lunge line just wasn't cutting no. it i think well, i had my, a pony like that too once my parents knew nothing about horses so it it was just kind of trial and error. Too. Well, you know, it isn't, um, you know, you, I hear stories from other women uh, all, that, you know, similar situation where daughter wants pony, they cave, buy pony, but don't really have any experience with it. But fortunately, they recognized, okay, yeah, this pony's not going to be safe unless we put some serious you know, miles on it before. <laughs> well, and I had I had some moxie, so it's just like I just climbed on him and went anyways. So yeah, he turned out okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. Um, so now with your, you know, as that progressed, you know, more horses came into your world. How did you, um, what made you want to start raising Andalusians? I always knew I wanted a particular kind of horse and I didn't know, I, I knew the look that I wanted. I just didn't know what breed it, it was. And one day I was um, actually doing farrier work at a client's house and they brought this young stallion around the corner that they had just brought up from Mexico. And it's like, that's it. <laughs> that's, that's my horse. <laughs> and so within a month I was in California looking at horses and brought up three mares from California. So, wow. So yeah. now, cause here in Saskatchewan, um, you know, it, that wouldn't be, you know, your common breeds here are going to be your quarter horse, your Arabian, your thoroughbred, you know, Appaloosa, but Andalusian is something that is um, really special. And is there a characteristic of like, you know, their behavior or attitude or the way you ride? Um, originally, it was their look because I, I didn't know what their attitude was, but their attitude is really fantastic too. Like all horses, there's... Yep, good ones and bad good ones. ones. And bad ones. <laughs> Um, but generally, they really like people. They're really athletic. They're super strong. And they just have that look with the long manes and tails and the nice archy neck and right. that I really, really like. That, that all women like that. They yeah. all, it, you know, that looks like Prince Charming's it horses. Does. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now that leads me to when did you decide that working in the equestrian field as a farrier, which is predominantly a male-driven industry, um, how, how did you get going with that? Um, I think it was, as I was growing up, um, we had nobody to do their feet properly, the horses that we had. So it was just kind of, they were never done right. So I thought, well, I'm going to learn how to do my own horse's feet well. So I went to college um, in Oklahoma. And um, from there, I just thought, well, now I've gone to school, I probably should pay for school. <laughs> so I started working and that was in 1989. So it's a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, but it, but it's, you know, really fantastic that you chose that, you know, you've, you've done fairy work for me for a really long time. And, you know, back in 1989, that would have been, you know, still, you know, heavily male 
dominant industry. So the fact that um, you know, you, you, you stayed with it and have become hugely successful um, here in Saskatchewan um, and, you know, other opportunities have, uh, have come up for you. I understand that uh, the RCMP had you do some work for them. Yeah, that was really neat. A couple of years ago, they came to Regina and the ground wasn't very good. So the horses were overreaching and pulling their shoes and they basically can't ride them very easily without shoes so I went and put a whole bunch of shoes on and then the next day I went and put a whole bunch of others that <laughs> fell off. so it was really cool because the horses are you know the they're they're really a symbol of Canada and it was that was kind of it was really nice job to have. They're very majestic in the, the RCMP musical ride. Um, for, for our um, listeners that are not from Canada, um, the RCMP is the Royal Canadian Mounted Police um, and they have a group of horses that they use as a drill team um, and they do color guard, they do parades, um, you know, their, their uniforms are outstanding. Um, like you said, you know, it really is a part of our Canadian culture. Um, when you think of Canada, you know, the, lots of times a picture of, uh, of a Mountie sitting on his horse um, and the big blacks and they're, and they're so majestic and so beautiful. And, and that would be quite an honor to, to have that opportunity. It, it was actually in, in so when she says, well, you know, make a bill up, I'm like, no, no, this is like, I, I can't. Mm -hmm. She's like, no, you have to. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you know, I feel like I should just donate this time. And she's like, no, no, no. <laughs> so, yeah, your yeah. tax dollars they, paid for that yeah, anyway. Exactly. So, so that, well, that's, um, that's really neat. They, cause they travel all over Canada performing and, you know, and, and the really cool part of their riding group is that all of their, all of their drill team members aren't riders originally they oh. you know lots of them you know they apply to be kind of uh, posted to that uh, to that troop um so there's lots of you know newbies riding and and i i often wonder how many horse of the horses are like oh got a fresh one yeah, today yeah. They, they probably do <laughs> <laughs> so now you know uh, we talked a little bit about um you know that male male driven industry that you're in you know what are some other challenges that you've that you've seen um it's actually interesting because when i did start i think it was really predominantly male but i think now there's a lot more females doing a lot more variety of jobs mm -hmm. and i was just saying to someone the other day that most of my clients are actually female like the horse industry is largely a female industry um you know there's there's men who ride too but largely it is a female industry and then as far as other challenges, like just the physical work is, is difficult. You have to stay in shape to do it. Um, you have to stay doing it all the time. So yeah, it's not like a part-time hobby because no. it is, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're bent over a lot. So, you know, you need the core strength and, and really horses are, you know, they do have their own minds and, and, you know, sometimes they don't like to cooperate. Even the best ones exactly. sometimes like to misbehave. Now, now tell me a little bit about, um, you know, some, or, or, or some advice on now you, you have a breeding program. So you have lots of babies. How do you start, start your young horses? So they develop good habits for, you know, seeing, you know, for seeing the farrier, those type of things. And vets and stuff too, which also like mm -hmm. well behaved <laughs> animals. Um, we start our babies very young on the halter. Um, and we usually do a fair bit of work, but the most of the work that we do with ours is when they're weaned. We take them in and out of the barn for about two months after their first weaned. So they get that tying in the barn and they get that routine of in and out of the barn. Um, and we practice with loading them on trailers and picking up their feet and, and we do everything with our horses. We try and do very kindly. Um, I think more and more as I've grown older, my shift has been to kindness in training. Um, so that's something that we really, uh, the horses actually like us because we're kind to them. Too. You know, and I, and I think that years ago you know it was you know we'll get the whip out and and yeah. i'm gonna make you do this with instead of why don't we try to do this together yeah i think there's been a big shift with train with very very good trainers to 
kindness and well and and like you said way more women in the industry yeah and women tend to be a little bit more nurturing um so you know the softer hands uh, you know softer voices yeah. they they do tend to like that and you know i've met a lot of horses that you know they have no problem with women but you bring you know you pop a man up there and you know the nicest horse will will give him halfway around and then be like see you later yeah <laughs> Now, uh, you and your daughter just returned from a, an adventure of your own. Um, tell me about your trip. We did. We went to Cyprus for, we rode four days there. So we decided we were going to be lazy and not camp. So we stayed at the Reeser Ranch historical um, um, house. So we stayed at their bed and breakfast there, which was really fantastic, really good people. And from there, we could ride into Cypress Hills Provincial Park. And we rode um, you, probably 20, 20, over 20 miles a day for, oh, nice. yeah. So we did a lot of riding and a lot of up and down hills with our horses. And Now your daughter um, has been riding for quite a few years as well. Yes. How does she, you know, you guys just pack a lunch or what um, did we were fed a very good breakfast there this <laughs> okay. time. so we just took granola bars for lunch so yeah but we pack a lot of water and lunch mm -hmm. and carry them in, in saddle packs behind our saddles and yeah oh good so. um so now what sort of kind of scenery like do you cross is there a lot of water that you get to go um, through there's, there's a you? there's a creek there that you go to and there's a lot of wildflowers and trees and oh, the, the terrain's quite diverse. Did you see any wildlife? We saw some deer and some lots of birds actually. Oh, okay. Lots of different variety of birds. It's it's so. interesting. I've been chatting with people that have, you know, with unfortunately with 2020 being the the year of uh, stay at home vacations. <laughs> if you can uh, call it that. <laughs> that's, no. the, that's the polite way. Um, but lots of people have been traveling to our big national parks that have uh, uh, the bears have been out so no bears on this trip for no years just just some uh, some deer and the horses tend to be uh pretty calm with them you know they think the deer are more afraid of you so they yeah. they uh stay away um well that's great you know watching or you know going on on adventures whether they're you know a thousand miles away or, or 200 miles away they're so important for um you know the your mental health for you know and just the time that you got to spend just with your daughter and there was no cell phones and there was no um you know facebook and internet and where you know it was just the time where you and her and your horses and now did you ride you each have your own horse yes um now do you switch to uh we didn't this time i, I actually we took both of naomi's horses i took her mare that she usually rides because uh, I'm just riding a four-year-old right now so oh, okay. I have a young horse and, so. and you thought well maybe we're going I'll for relaxing girl. <laughs> <laughs> yes he's not gonna fuss about too much yeah um you know and, it's, and she fusses anyways <laughs> well sometimes it's nice just to know what you're yeah. you know know what you're gonna get yeah and going on old faithful yeah. you know right back to that first big draft horse that or big pony that you had that it you know it was safe and yeah. and it made for your holiday to be uh to be, you know, that much better. Um, now, besides Cyprus, where uh, are there other places that you've gone yeah, riding? We rode in Grasslands National Park down. Um, that was quite a few years ago. We went down there, so that was really nice. Um, and then we've gone to Spruce Woods in Manitoba, uh, two trifling trips, and that's really they're really nice trails there. It's really beautiful park area too. And the one nice thing about our provincial parks is a lot of them provide um stabling they have you know really nice setups for outdoor corrals some even actually have stalls that yeah. you can spruce woods actually has a absolutely fantastic horse equestrian camping area it is second to none like the it, there's showers there's tons of pens for the horses lots of fresh water it's really really nice and there. it's affordable you, it you know you, you're, yeah. you don't have to spend a lot of money no. um but you still get to time you know get to spend some time you know doing your own adventure because because yeah. every time you ride your horse it is an adventure because <laughs> you just never know you know a, a paper bag could fly out yeah. and it's like oh my goodness <laughs> um so now what advice would you give to women just entering the industry like is there um, any tips that you'd want to share? Or? Um, the farrier industry, um, just um, make sure you really want to do it. 
um, if, if you get into it um, and, and work hard at what you're doing. Um, as far as breeding horses, it's a tough thing to make a living at, mm -hmm. but I call it the hobby that pays for itself. <laughs> so um, it's a good way for me to be able to show and promote my horses and uh, they, they do pay for themselves. So make a living is a little tricky. Right. But um, yeah. And, and you know, you said, you know, right from, from day one, you knew what you wanted yes. um, and who, you know, that having those pretty horses and, and there is a mark, you know, there's lots of people out there that want those pretty horses. And when they're coming from uh, a reputable breeder who's put the time in and has, you know, they're not just a breeding factory where they're, uh, you know, it's not a, a horse breeding mill where, yeah. you know, just how many can we get, you know, you breed within your means, you know, so you have enough feed for them and they're not being shipped off to the, to the market or, or the counter. So yeah, we usually have anywhere from one to four foals is maximum per year. And sometimes I'll go a couple of, like, sometimes I won't have any, mm -hmm. you know, depending on what's been sold from the year before. So, and it's important to me to have them really well behaved for my new owners. So. Right. And, and, you know, that's something that, um, because, you know, a good behavior, good attitude sure goes a long way. Cause you know, when they're right from day one, have that foundation laid, it does, you know, you, you can always tell which ones have had the good start yeah. because they're, they tend to be more willing to try. Um, so, so that's great. Um, so now, with all of your, you know, your breeding program, your farrier program, um, is there any, any other stories that you'd like to share that, uh, um, I can't think of it. Oh no, that's okay. I so, well now always I, we ask, uh, some fun little questions that kind of fall, uh, sometimes equestrian, sometimes just silly, but, um, what is your must, one must pack item when you go on a trip? Underwear. Underwear. <laughs> that, that is very important. Yes. Um, are you a planner or a wing it style traveler? Oh, I'm a planner. Yeah. I, I don't I, like to leave things behind. <laughs> <laughs> I can wing it. It depends on the trip. Sometimes it's like, okay, pack a bag and go, but no, not usually I have to, because I leave animals behind too. Right. So even if we go for like two days, I have to plan who's going to feed the dogs, right? So yeah. yeah. Who's going to check the water? I'm a planner. <laughs> um, well, that's, I, I fall into that category as well. Um, what is your favorite riding discipline? Um, like, do you prefer dressage, barrel racing, jumping? Dressage is what I work on the most at home. That's what I'm trying to develop my horses for. But uh, like sometimes the trail riding and the riding out that we do is absolutely like, it's so relaxing and it's, it's good for the soul. It's good for the soul. And it really pushes you. Like when you ride 20 miles up and down different train, it really does push you and it pushes your horse. So well, that's great. So besides riding and, and going on adventures, what other hobbies do you have? Um, I garden. I have a big garden. Um, I, I do crafts and stuff, but not like overly much. I just, I don't seem to have a lot of time. You like to I ski? I read. I do. We ski. We ski as a family a lot. So like crazy skiers. So. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And read, what type of books do you like to read? Um, everything. Are you, are you? Nonfiction, a lot of Canadian literature. Um, Whodunits, romance. Oh, um, not so much. Every once in a while. <laughs> The ro everyone likes romance because it always has a happy ending. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not like a murder or anything. It's, it, it, they always have happy endings. Uh, what is your biggest addiction? Oh, food. <laughs> yeah. Especially yeah. like creamy stuff, ice cream, like that. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Um, I try not to indulge it, but. Are you an early bird or a night owl? Oh, I'm early. Or, yeah. yeah. Um, strangest thing you've ever eaten? Oh, frog's legs. I went to China when I was in my 20s. We ate some pretty weird stuff there. Um, I don't even know what some of it was. Well, and, and sometimes it's that it tasted okay, yeah. so I'm not going to ask what it yeah, was. Yeah, they had these eggs that they served you that were like buried somewhere for 100 days that came up black. Yeah, that I, 
that was I <laughs> that that felt probably, so good. <laughs> that probably uh, is is the strangest yeah, thing. That's weird. So one last question: um, What is the one thing you've always wanted to do but haven't done yet? Mm. You know, I, I I yes I do Africa safari. Okay, like I would like to see. The big five. The big animals, yeah. And and that would be, a, before they're all gone, that yes. would be a big thrill for me. And in their natural setting, mm -hmm. you know, that would be really, really Well, I, um, that is also on my bucket list. I did ask somebody else that question, and they said jump out of an airplane. And I was like, oh. If <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I think I'm with you with Africa. I don't know if I can jump out of an airplane Africa's just yet. the one place I have not traveled that I would go in a heartbeat. So, yeah. Well, that, uh, that's so interesting. Yeah. And, and you have such a great story. You know, the, the, you know, the farrier work it is, is physically hard work it and, is. um, you know, you've done it for, for a long time and have, you know, successful business. And Are I know, aging me? <laughs> Oh, I've aged myself. <laughs> don't worry. Um, you know, successful business and, um, you know, clearly respected in the industry that are, you know, our national police force, um, wanted you to come do some work. So, so that's really great. So thank you so much for coming, coming to my house today You're for welcome. the interview. Um, I super hot here. So hopefully the air conditioning oh, is yeah, better than my house. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have a great rest of your day and we'll talk soon. Thank you.